Gender Blenders, what's going on? So it's a Saturday, and as usual, it's Chris, and uh, today we're talking about staring, and uh, what do we do when people stare and try to kind of uh, look at us and figure out, you know, what gender we might be, or, uh, you know, what category we belong in, or uh, those sorts of things. Um, to be totally honest, I am generally pretty oblivious to that sort of thing going on. I uh, generally don't notice when other people are, are staring at me or in some way trying to figure me out. Um, I just don't have the social radar for that. So, you know, I, I don't really notice whenever uh, anybody does something like that. I, the only time that something like that comes to my attention is if someone kind of addresses me directly. But you know, I read in uh, college um, this study that was done as a part of a class I took, a sociology class I took, that said uh, people don't actually um, really look at us or actually pay much attention um, to other people uh, that often. In fact, most people are so involved in their internal weather and in their own thoughts and their own world and what's going on around them that they really uh, don't spend a lot of time doing those sorts of things uh, and that in fact if there is any time spent it is usually quick and it is usually uh, a snap judgment and then usually the person moves on. Um, now we all know of situations in which that's not the case and where we can see people actually you know going through that process but um, as someone who's rather oblivious to it, uh, I can't say that I've ever really encountered that. So, I, you know, I suppose the advice that I would give with regards to that is only to continue to focus on being you, to do everything you can to present yourself as authentically as possible. Um, it is a fundamental part of reality that uh, you know, people are going to, in some way, have questions in their mind and maybe in some way confront us about those things. But unless they actually confront me, unless they actually stop me, unless they actually in some way um, say something to me, uh, I, don't really, I don't really think about it. And I think that that's probably the best way to go, is to generally try to be as authentic as you can and uh, let the cards fall where they may. Now, I also have the benefit of, um, you know, being in Portland, and uh, Portland is a very progressive city, and Portland is made up of a whole host of individuals um, from all sorts of demographics and all sorts of walks of life and all sorts of philosophies. So, uh, you know, they um, tend to make Portland a little bit easier for those of us who might not fit one category or another to kind of get around. Um, so that probably compounds the problem even more as opposed to say if I was living in a small town or I was, uh, you know, living in a rather conservative part of the world. I, I, I think though that really um, that that study is probably true. And if indeed that study is true, then it's best to focus more on just being authentic. It has been my experience that the majority of the people I have encountered um, have actually been very uh, polite and uh, for the most part, I don't know if acceptance is the right word, but um, they've never really made a problem of who I am or, or how I gender present or the pronouns I prefer or you know, uh, how people refer to me in passing or those sorts of things. So, I'm not sure I'm the best person uh, to really speak to this, but I think that because transition and because uh, the gender variant life is really about uh, being authentic, is really about uncovering who we are and manifesting who we are, that that's really where we should focus our energy. We should really focus our energy on being who we are, uh, being as authentic as possible, 
uh, when it comes to that. Because uh, whether or not we undergo transition and whether or not we binary identify, that's really what it comes down to, is attempting to in some way uh, be true to who we are and to present to the world the person that we are. And as um, a, a manner that is as honest and filled with integrity as possible. So, uh, yeah, we're always going to encounter individuals who might stare, who might look. I suppose that is a reality um, in a lot of places in the U.S. and around the world. But as long as we are true to ourselves, and as long as I think we present ourselves in an authentic manner, then regardless of the response, regardless of how we're uh, perceived, or regardless of how people um, interact with us, uh, we will always be able to approach the world with the capacity to accept the beauty that we have and to model to our fellow uh, brothers and sisters of humanity an attitude uh, of acceptance, an attitude of finding beauty uh, wherever it manifests itself and in whatever way it manifests itself. So, uh, yeah, I guess that's about it, really. Um, you know, we've had a great week and a a lot of people have said a lot of great things and shared a lot of experiences and uh, you know I hope that one of these videos connected with you and I hope that you are uh, continuing to enjoy the channel we all appreciate everybody turning uh, tuning in so to speak and uh, yeah thanks for tuning in on a Saturday and uh, I'll see everybody next week <laughs>